Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Colinati. Today I'm going to talk about my first batch of upcoming releases of 2018 that I am most looking forward to. I am hoping to do these quarterly. I've noticed in previous years I always end up doing about four of these in the year anyway, and I should do them quarterly and on schedule, right? Uh, I know you looked at the title of the video and said, Rachel, why are you posting this in February? Eh, January is long gone now. Well, I tried to film this video multiple times in January, but it never happened because I had to bump it for other things. I am on top of everything this year, guys. But I still want to talk about the three releases in January that I had on my list because two of them I still haven't read and I am very excited for them. First up is Beneath the Sugar Sky by Seanan McGuire, the third novella in her Wayward Children series that began with Every Heart a Doorway. The concept of the series is that children go to fantasy worlds, their portal fantasy adventures, and when they come back they find it very difficult to adjust to the real world because they don't really belong in the real world. Um, the worlds that they went to were kind of tailored for them, it's where they felt most comfortable. So a lot of them can't adjust and their parents don't know what to do with them, so they are sent to the school where a lot of other children like them are dealing with the same problem. Beneath the Sugar Sky, I think, is about Rini, the daughter of Sumi, who is one of the characters introduced at the school in Every Heart a Doorway. Only, Rini was destined to be born after Sumi died, and this definitely creates a paradox, so I think that this one is about Rini solving that paradox and saving her mother. Also, thank you to Brie for sending me this extra copy because I have no excuse for not reading it now. <laughs> The other Tor.com novella on my January list was Binti, The Night Masquerade by Nettie Okorafor, which is the conclusion to her Binti trilogy. I have already read this one, I talked about it in a weekly wrap-up, and it was really great. And it also made me think very differently about the middle one. Basically, I needed to reread the entire series because it's about a lot more than what I had initially interpreted it being about. It was really good. The other book that came out in January that I am very eager for, I'm practically counting the days until my library hold comes in, is The Graves of Fine and Private Place by Alan Bradley, the newest Flavia de Luce mystery novel. I think this is nine in the series, and I also think there's only going to be ten, so we're getting close to the end, I think. Um, Flavia is a 12-year-old girl living in 1950s England. She has a passion for chemistry, poisons, and investigating dead bodies. And sometimes I think the local police detectives actually like her help sometimes. They would never tell her that, of course. The series has an overall story arc about Flavia, her family, her family's fortune, and the death of her mother when she was very young, but each book has a pretty standalone murder investigation. And the description of this one begins, Flavia is enjoying the summer, spending her days punting along the river with her reluctant family. Languishing in boredom, she drags a slack hand in the water and catches her fingers in the open mouth of a drowned corpse and I bet she loved it. Moving on to February, it seems that all of the really amazing books are coming out on February 6th, which is good because that means they're coming out before my birthday, just, just in case my parents are watching this, yeah. <laughs> Probably the most important book on this list is Tempest and Slaughter by Tamara Pierce, coming out on February 6th. This is the long-awaited backstory for Numer, who is the sorcerer mage introduced in the Immortals Quartet. He's a pretty major character in that series. And Numer and Dane and the Immortals Quartet are basically my favorite things that Tamara Pierce has ever written. And it's no exaggeration to say that I have been waiting for this book for half of my life. I remember seeing it on the upcoming projects list on Pierce's website when I was like 13, 14 years old, and I'm 28 now. So my childhood dreams are finally coming true, guys. <laughs> I hope it doesn't disappoint, but I've always been very curious about Numer's backstory when he was um, learning magic at the university in Karthak and when he was friends with the eventual future emperor of Karthak named Orzone, who turns out to be a bad guy, um, but a lot of complicated stuff there. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this book being split up into a trilogy. On the other hand, that could mean just a lot more great story. So. 
crossing my fingers that I get this one for my birthday. It's all I really want. Also coming out on February 6th is Into the Fire by Elizabeth Moon. This is the second book in the Vada's Peace series, which itself is a sequel series to the five books in the Vada's War series. Because of this, I will say very little about what it's about, but it is the direct sequel to Cold Welcome that came out last year, and I really enjoyed it. I am so glad to be back with the character of Kylara Vada. Um, at this point, she has come back to her home planet, and that was sabotaged, and she survived with a bunch of other people on a desolate and isolated island in the middle of winter, hoping that somebody would think to look for them there. But now a bunch of conspiracies and mysteries on the planet have been uncovered, and Into the Fire is going to explore more of that. And once again, I cannot wait, because I really, really love these books by Elizabeth Moon. And also coming out on February 6th is Semiosis by Sue Burke. I've read a couple of interviews with the author about the book and an excerpt from it on Tor.com, and it sounds like something I'm really going to love, and I'll read the description of it here. Forced to land on a planet they aren't prepared for, human colonists rely on their limited resources to survive. The planet provides a lush but inexplicable landscape. Trees offer edible, addictive fruit one day and poison the next, while the ruins of an alien race are found entwined in the roots of a strange plant. Conflicts between generations arise as they struggle to understand one another and grapple with an unknowable alien intellect." So a story of survival in such an, an alien environment with possible sentient plants? I don't know, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of botany in the book, actually, and I think that will be very interesting. Probably not as um, out there and dangerous as The Plant Life and like The Mirror Empire by Cameron Hurley, but I'll take something that's less um, horror-inspired if I can. <laughs> And the final thing from February that I'm looking forward to is a bit of an odd one. It's called Monster Portraits by Sophia Samatar and Del Samatar, and I really don't know what this will be like. It has a very long and lush description, and I'll just read a snippet of it. Del Samatar's drawings conjure beings who drag worlds in their wake. World Fantasy Award-winning author Sophia Samatar responds with elusive, critical, and ecstatic meditations. Together they have created a secret history of the multiracial child, a guide to the beasts of an unknown mythos, and a dreamer's iconography. I think this is actually a pretty short work, maybe like a novella length, and it's illustrated by Del Samatar, who is uh, Sophia Samatar's brother. I want to try it because I have loved everything I've read by Samatar, just her way of writing, and a lot of the topics that she writes about, including biracial characters, has just been very, very interesting, and this sounds like a truly unusual work from her. And now on to March. The first book I want to talk about is actually a translated one that I recently stumbled across, and I want to read the entire description of it because it's lengthy, but it explains the interesting bits of this. So this book is called Typescript of the Second Origin by Manuel de Perrolo, translated by Sarah Martin, and it's coming out on March 8th. So this says, um, this widely acclaimed post-apocalyptic novel tells the story of two children who survive the brutal destruction of Earth by alien explorers. In the absence of the rule of law and social norms, the children create a utopian world of two that honors knowledge and interracial love to become a new Adam and Eve and to try to bring about the world's second origin. A bestseller and required reading for secondary school students in Catalonia, Typescript of the Second Origin is indispensable to understand a region of Spain whose language, culture, and institutions were targeted and punished by Francisco Franco. At the same time, this tale of survival reaches beyond national and cultural borders to offer contemporary readers a timely warning about the threat of global ecological destruction. First and foremost, I'm mostly curious about this as a Catalonian science fiction novel. I studied Catalonia and Spain in Spanish courses in university and was very interested by all of that history, uh, but never read any literature from that area of the world. So, you know, a science fiction novel? From Catalonia. Yeah, I'm gonna read that. Um, also, while I'm not as into post-apocalyptic tales or dystopias, um, this one seems to have a very unusual premise that I've never heard of before. Basically, children recreating the world and letting humanity have a second chance, and maybe that connection with the ecology and climate change could just be really, really interesting. 
Coming out on March 13th is Imposter Syndrome by Michelle Baker. This is the third book in the Arcadia Project, which began with Borderline. It is about um, a woman named Millie Roper who has borderline personality disorder and physical disabilities after a suicide attempt, and she gets involved in the fey world fairies in our world. <laughs> I won't say more about what the stories are about for fear of spoilers at this point. It is the third book in the series, but I loved the first two and I expect this one will be just as good. Also coming out on March 13th is Gods, Monsters, and the Lucky Peach by Kelly Robson. Like, what a title. I want to know why it's called that. Um, this is a Tor.com novella and it sounds like it's a mashup of a couple of genres that I would never have thought to combine, but I trust Robson to pull it off. I've read a couple of her short stories and they were amazing. She kind of burst on the scene relatively recently with some excellent short stories. Um, so the very vague description says, this is a far-reaching, mind-bending science fiction adventure that uses time travel to merge climate fiction with historical fantasy. Like I said, I would never have thought to combine those three things, but I'm looking forward to it. And the last title on my list is Stone Mad by Elizabeth Bear, which comes out from Tor.com on March 20th. This is another novella, and it is the return of Karen Memory. I read the novel Karen Memory when it came out a couple of years ago, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, Karen is a prostitute. In fact, most of the characters are women who are prostitutes in this kind of um, steampunk Western world. Um, and I really remember how much I liked the female friendships in the book, and I really wanted to see more of these women and their interactions and stuff, and of course the future for Karen and her girlfriend Priya. And it sounds like Stone Mad takes place after that, when Karen is living with Priya and she has retired from being a prostitute, and then they run into some spiritualists who let out a magical creature, all havoc breaks loose, and Karen's gonna save the day and I am there for that. And those are my most anticipated books of January, February, and March of 2018. There are a bunch of other ones that I cut from this list, even though I'm really curious about them, but just for the sake of time, it was a very, very long list. So if you are also interested in any of these, please let me know down in the comments, and if there's anything that you think I might have missed that I would really enjoy, also let me know that. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon, and until then, bye.